Hi everyone, uh, today what we're going to do is uh, turn the corner, uh, going out of part one of our class and getting into uh, part two of the class uh, during which we start to look at uh, culture as the main dimension of our course framework and how that ties into our class subtopics uh, today starting with the social construction reality. So what I'll do today for our class, I'll break it up, I'm going to break it up into uh, two different parts. I break it up into an introduction to culture and social life. So just kind of talking about what culture is, uh, what it does. And then for the second part of our class, I'll create a new lecture and we'll specifically get into the Clark reading for today. And also we'll touch on the in-class assignment for today as well. So to begin, What I do want to do is briefly touch on and briefly recap what we did uh, for our last class. In our last class, we were kind of ending up uh, part one of the class by talking about the ways we think in sociology, uh, what we do as sociologists. And this is captured in that sociological imagination. And so basically, we're trying to link the social world to the personal and recognize the back and forth between the two. And so I ask you to apply the sociological imagination in our first in-class assignment. So basically, we're looking at how what's going on in the public world is shaping private life, how what's going on in the history in which we live, how that's shaping our life story. So for the in-class assignment, you had to choose between either explaining why we listen to more types of music today compared to the past, or why we have more personal debt today compared to the past. So uh, for number one, uh, for A, basically the answer is the technology today. We have certain technology, uh, be uh, the internet, the uh, live streaming, the uh, you know, MP3s. We have this, uh, you know, new technologies at our hands that allows us to be exposed to many more types of music uh, compared to uh, the past. So, you know, some people may say, oh, it, there's more types of music today compared to the past. It's not about how many types of music there are, but it's more about the access to that. So in the past, if you wanted to try out something new, listen to a new type of music, basically you'd have to go, you know, buy a record, buy a CD, and that costs, you know, money. But today, as long as you have kind of that internet connection, you can listen to a variety of types of music uh, for free and you can be exposed to it. And when you're exposed to it, you can develop that taste for it. In addition, you know, on our computers, you know, on uh, different phones, you have the ability to buy single songs. So maybe you're not buying an entire record of a certain genre, but you still listen to it because there's a few songs in it you like. So the key part today is the history in which we live consists of certain technologies that allows us to expand our musical taste and more so compared to the past. And so if you chose the uh, second option, the personal debt, well, you know, basically, you know, today what you see, wages have stagnated uh, since the early 1970s. In other words, in terms of real money, how much a dollar actually gets you, a dollar gets you as much today as it did in the early 1970s. The rub to that is prices have gone up. So, you know, what we pay for on a daily basis, the food we eat, uh, the clothing we wear, the you know, gas we use to put in the car, the utility bills we pay to you know, keep the lights on, uh, the tuition money that we uh, use for college, you know, all of that has gone up dramatically in some cases. And the amount of money people are making basically has remained the same. So when stuff costs more, but you're not making enough money to bridge that gap, what you do is often you use credit, you use you know, what I like to call kind of fake money, you know, money you really don't have, uh, you take out loans, and then ultimately when you're using credit and uh, when you're taking out loans, that creates a debt because ultimately you're supposed to pay that back. So it's not because you know, we're born a certain way uh, that we listen to more types of music compared to perhaps you know, our parents. It's not because uh, we're bad with money, uh, irresponsible, it's because we're living in different times where the times themselves are different and they promote more musical diversity 
and they promote higher levels of financial debt. So now let's move to part two of the class. So here we start to look at our first dimension of our course framework, culture, and how that ties into social life. As I mentioned before, this is one piece of the puzzle. We'll be looking at social psychology in part three. Uh, part four of the class, we'll look at institutions. All three we'll look at individually, but also the interconnection among the three as well. So we can look at this question of what is culture? I often say culture is a word that we hear, that we use, but if somebody really asks us to define it specifically, uh, sometimes we struggle with coming up with such a definition. So we can think of culture as basically norms, uh, values, expectations, uh, symbols, uh, languages, and material goods that make up a society. We can say that every society has a culture. So every society, you find norms that people follow, you know, what you're uh, supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do. Now, every culture has values, you know, what people embrace, what they endorse. Every culture has uh, symbols, you know, different things that are recognized in a certain way. Uh, we all have languages, both uh, verbal and nonverbal languages. And we all have different material goods, basically, you know, things that we use in the social world. Every culture has these things, but in every uh, society, the culture will differ. You speak different languages, you recognize different symbols, you follow different norms, you have different values, you use different types of uh, technologies. And so when you share a culture with somebody, whether it be on a regional basis or a nationwide basis, that culture creates similarity. You know, so Americans are gonna be more similar than different when compared to other societies in which those societies have different cultures. They speak different languages and they uh, dress differently in terms of you know, material goods that exist. And so we can say that culture creates similarities when you share a culture, but it also creates differences when you don't share a culture. So we're not born necessarily similar or different, but we create those things socially through culture. So you know people, in Mexico are not born, you know, speaking one language or another. They learn so through their culture. And up to our north, you know, some Canadians aren't born speaking French, uh, but they learn that language through their culture. And that creates similarities when you're learning the same language, Spanish or French, but it also creates differences when one society is speaking one language and another society is speaking something different. So we can look at how culture operates as a strong social force. And here we go back to the idea of the social structure. The social structure is anything larger than the, than the individual. And as a social structure, it can influence kind of what we do and why we do it. So we say culture is a key social force, a key social structure, because it informs what we value. So again, it's not magic or it's not uh, natural that most people in America share values with one another. We have that reality here and because we're all socialized to learn and adapt the same values. And when you look at you know, different ways of behaving, the languages, the languages we speak, again, it's not from the inside out. It's not innate that you're born speaking one language or another, but rather you start to speak a language based upon the culture mandating you uh, that you speak it. So if you're born in the United States, for example, you may enjoy speaking uh, German, it makes you sound tough. Or you may enjoy speaking French, uh, it makes you sound uh, romantic. Uh, you can't speak French or you can't speak German because you're mandated by your culture to speak English. So that's what we mean, it operates as a social force. Uh, the symbols that we recognize and um, you know, we re we'll get into this some, uh, some more in the next, in the next uh, lecture in terms of part two of this class when we go over the Clark reading. But, you know, looking at languages and how languages can operate as symbols as well. In the United States, if I see somebody on campus, and I give them the thumbs up, uh, they recognize it as something positive. You know, keep up the good work, hey, you know, nice to see you. But if I go to a different culture and I give somebody a thumbs up, uh, basically it means uh, something very negative. 
it means like the middle finger in terms of the symbolism we attach to it uh, there. So yeah, something simple as a thumbs up can have different meaning according to a culture in which you find yourself and the meaning you learn to attach uh, to the gesture. So we also recognize in addition to culture really shaping who we are, it shapes our values, it shapes how we act, how we dress, uh, the symbols again we recognize. We can also see how we can practice agency. We can use culture through our free will to create self, to create social expressions. So going back to dress. So, you know, a lot of what we wear is kind of dictated by our culture, uh, what is fashionable, uh, what we're supposed to wear, you know, as men, as women. And that's provided to us, you know, we don't get to make up what's in the stores or online, that's provided to us. The hand that's dealt to us. But we can, you know, choose our own clothing. You know, we can choose, you know, what to wear and how to wear it in ways that we are using free will. We are using agency, you know, although we don't necessarily get to pick the clothing that, you know, we get to wear, you know, the hand that we're dealt, but we can kind of use clothing in our own way uh, to express ourselves. So again, there's that dynamic of structure and dynamic of agency uh, coming together to create social life as a whole. So I'll leave that there for uh, part one of this class. And then for part two of the class, we'll get into specifically the reading uh, for today, the Clark piece. And then we'll talk about the in-class assignment number two as well.